glad to know that I do get some kind of weird alert when it kind of drops out because I would have would have been rambling on like you're still here because technically it showed you were like still on the screen. Yeah. By the by, we're back. Refresh and all that. Um, my internet. My internet's a whore. I don't know why it does that. It's it's time to seriously consider replacing AT and T because they're a bunch of cunts. So anyway, Marcus. So so uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about dynamite. I think the- yeah, man, we were talking about that main event, the uh, Blackpool mm-hmm. Fight Club. Yes. Showdown. Yeah, and I was saying it was uh, two great options that I thought were better than Punk. Uh, even with all the uh, adulation and the fanfare that he gets, thinks about it like Moxley specifically after the all-out situation cut a phenomenal promo, talking about putting the company on his back, and D. is also somebody you can rely on. So uh, there were no real losers there. You know, you, you was going to get a great champion either way. It went to Moxley. He's now a three-time champion and uh, back being top dog. So, you know, obviously he's going to have to deal with the MJF of it all, but, you know, we all must suffer. So, you know. Yeah, and I have a feeling yeah, that they gave the belt to uh, Mox just to drop it to uh, MJF. I think that's a very realistic thing that's going to happen. Yeah, because I doubt they're going to put it back on Paige, who now has an opportunity. No, and and they shouldn't. Paige was not a good champion. He was he was forced. And, and the only reason people don't want to say that is because they like the elite and they like AEW, but he was a rush champion. And I don't feel like he had any real legitimacy as champion heading into it. Even though he was the one that beat Kenny Omega, it didn't feel like he beat Kenny Omega. And I think that really did hurt him. <clears throat> and I think with MJF, like, Paige is not charismatic at all. And I feel like that's something that MJF can at least bring to the table because he is charismatic and people do like him. So he could work as champ. Although, I don't know why you didn't just put him in the tournament if you're just going to put the belt on him. And I don't know why you're going to put him in a title match if you're just going to have him lose. So, like, it kind of all roads point to MJF winning the belt. And I don't know how I feel about that. Although, I will say this. I love the spot where Moxley and Brian had their legs entangled and they were slapping each other in the face. Upside down. That was dope. I like that. That was funny. No, it was it was some good stuff. And, and the only... Uh... I also think that that battle royal happened on Rampage, but him and Page and uh, it came down to Page and Roosh, and I wish they would have went with Roosh just because that's a fresh matchup, and I think a, a cool combination to throw against somebody like a Moxley. Mm-hmm. But um, that is a great spot where they uh, like I think uh, Roosh like fell almost upside down, and then Page went over him and he ended up holding on to him. Uh, for an almost elimination. It was a real cool spot. But yeah, the, the Mox and Brian, like I really dig the fact that Mox is doing a, the, this fight club because I think it's made him better as a performer because like, I love the way he's been free to do him in, in AEW, but I've never really been a fan of his match style. But I think, you know, him being, you know, fight pool club and opening up all these new submission avenues for him and, you know, just him kind of mixing his brawling style with it's kind of created a unique blend that makes him uh, just easier and, and more confident to watch. You know, remember he was in mm-hmm. WWE, he kept doing that Nigel McGinnis rebound thing, which was just, it was just stupid. And then when he came to AEW, like he was just, at first he was just this brutal brawler who would go through all these crazy matches and do whatever and bleed constantly. Um, but it's more of a two chaotic style, so I appreciate him kind of melding that. And uh, add some submissions. It's, it's not, not a lot of people can say they tapped out deep right. So that is something that <laughs> is pretty dang uh, rare. So uh, yeah, and he hit and he, and he freaking hit the curb stomp, which the crowd <laughs> they were stunned for a minute. They was like, "Yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, anything happened on Rampage that that caught your eye? Because obviously the Sting Muda stuff was great. Oh no, that was that. That's the just the the Sting Muda stuff and the Ricky Starks uh, high yeah, stuff. I thought was brilliant. Yeah, mm-hmm. you would do book interview with that. We, you know, I've been I've been championing Starks since his NWA stuff, and I think he's fulfilling all the potential I saw when he was in the NWA uh, here. And he almost got the cheer for a New Orleans native in that regard. Um, for me, anyway, and 
they'd be stupid not to capitalize on doing stuff with Hobbs. Because like I said, they, they got Hobbs and Cage on the same roster, and they they going with Hobbs, and I can't blame them because I think it's it's more it's more mine to be uh more cold to be minded there, if you will. So. Mm-hmm. He's untapped potential. Yep. While we know what Cage is, Cage needs to just leave the company at this point. And like, I don't think that's a bad thing for AEW to lose some of these guys, mostly because they have a bloated roster. They can't use everyone. And some of the names they have would be better served working elsewhere anyway. So <clears throat> losing some guys would actually be a, a, a boon for, or a boom. Boom would be a positive. There we go. We'll just go with that word. So that was AEW. Interesting week. Uh, NWA is not great. Uh, they're adding Tyrus to the world title match between Trevor Murdoch and uh, Zack Ryder for some reason. Matt Cardona. <laughs> Yeah, ne- never has a situation uh, presented a, 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 a title as hard times as that. Right. I don't know why they keep trying to push Tyrus. Like that, That's one that's going to boggle my mind. And they brought back the question mark recently. It's like, what are you guys even doing? I don't, I don't know, man. You got the Pope sitting right there. You already know we was running the thing. Pope would be... <laughs> Pope would be hold at this point, um, but yeah, man, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that Tyrus fetish um, and Ryder. Well, we know, we know, we know, we not be fans of Ryder, but he's kind of had this villain uh, resurgence on the on the independence and whatnot. So I get him, but this Tyrus thing is just, I don't know. What do you think he got crossover potential with the with the Rutfield Network or whatever in the hell he's on? I don't know. I think I think that's exactly what it is. I, I think they are so high up on the idea of him being a Fox News analyst that they're like, yeah, we're going to just push him. I, I don't know, man. That that to me isn't something that I want to go down the road with, especially as, as my top guy. Moreover, he's 50, can't move, can't bump. The fuck are you even doing with him? But Billy Corgan is just, he's just a shit booker, man. He really is. And and so they finally updated their, their announce table. It's Tim Storm, Velvet, and whoever the, the lead guy is. But, like, the funny thing is, is, like, they don't really let Velvet talk anymore, which is delightful. And they're still rolling with that Mae Valentine chick as their interviewer, and she can't really emote. So she's like a robot asking these people questions. So tell me what you're going to do with this person <laughs> in this match. Error, error, error. <laughs> she, she's very realistic for a robot, I'll say that much. And, like, no. her appeal is she's attractive. And they're trying to make her into a talker. I ain't, that that ain't her goose to cook. Like they never said, Tori Wilson, here's a mic, go cut a promo. Tori Wilson is a Hall of Famer because she looked good in a bikini, and was always some people love to see. Same with Miss Elizabeth. Like sometimes you don't need people to do promos. Sometimes you can just let them exist as stationary objects that well, not, not stationary objects, but objects that move around with the wrestlers. Uh, ECW had Jason. You know, he's the sexiest man alive. I think he'd wrestled a few times, but not well. So, like, the idea that you can't just use people as, like, window dressing, for lack of a better term, is is inaccurate because you can. So they should because NWA is really trying to push some people into spots they shouldn't be in, and Mae Valentine, Velvet it's, Sky, they're hurting the product. It's, it's weird because that's what she was at first. Mm-hmm. When, when they had her trying to, you know, quote unquote be the girlfriend for some dude. I forgot exactly who it was at the time. This was when, when the NWA was strictly on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I mean like I, I mean if, I think the chick that do the backstage stuff with Impact is falling into a groove where she kinda she has a lot of interactions and reactions and stuff that happen with the promos and then also it's a thing where now like other performers be like, okay, beat it kid, I'm finna do this, that and the third. But uh she's even found her groove. Um uh, with the whole thing, but May, it's not like she can't emote because her face doesn't move, but it's 
And at this point, I don't know if she's doing it on purpose or not. But yeah, it's, it's just it's awkward. She looks she good, looks good. And that's her appeal. And I don't know why we need to be deeper than that, especially with somebody who isn't exactly the most comfortable on camera. Yeah, with the sky, man, like, I, I get the concept of three-man boots. I almost feel like everybody's doing them. They don't need to. I don't think, I mean, they don't do that in Impact. Nope. Um, thankfully. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, unless, yeah, anymore. Unless you're trying to just come off like you're being, you know, an equal opportunity employer and whatnot, what have you. Because uh, she don't really give, like, a deep nuance, like, unbelievable take when the women's out there. She doesn't so. give a deep, nu- nuanceful <laughs> take when anyone's out there. She, she just sticks with the rudimentary, oh, my God, can you believe that? That was so amazing. <laughs> go get Medusa. Go get fucking Gail Kim. Go get... Uh, anyone, go get anyone. If if you want a female color guy, is if that's your goal in life, go get anyone. And K- Katrina Lee, go get her. Uh, go get what? Lacey Von Eric. Go get anyone you can. What? Wasn't Mickey heavy down there at one point? Mickey was down there. Down. Um, they did stuff with Taryn. I think Taya may have done some stuff when she was there. So like they've had options. I think Taya was there. But it's like they're really gung ho on Velvet Sky specifically, and it's not that there's a woman on the commentator t- table. I, I want to make that abundantly clear. It's that it's Velvet Sky. She's bad, and th- they 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 had a three person booth with two bad people being Velvet Sky and the other one being Austin Idol. They got rid of Austin Idol, so thankfully they figured that out. So now they just got to do the same thing with Velvet. Just, just just yank her off the table, or as the kids say, yeet her, yeet her off the table. <laughs> Throw her out like uh, Uncle Phil did to Jazzy Jeff all those times. Uh. And now Bully Ray's in, in the promotion. And, like, he main evented this week against, uh, who the fuck was it? Mike Knox and VSK. They're uh, Team Cardona now. Yeah, and, and all the, you just keep listening to all reasons for me to not watch. That's right. why I'm like, I'm, like, Chad, tell me what's been going on in there, <laughs> I mean, Jay Bradley's a tag team champion now. They have two tag team title belts. They have the world titles and the U.S. belts. And Jay Bradley and the other guy formed the Bouncers, and they won the NWA United States tag team titles. So, like, that's cool. Homicide's their light heavyweight champion. That's fine. It, it's, it's weird. Like, I don't know what the NWA is doing, and I don't think the NWA knows what they're doing, and Billy Corgan really is not a good promoter. Well, he's a decent promoter because they're still in business. He's not a good booker. So he, he he needs to change the reins because hot damn, some of this nonsense is just fucking terrible. I understand they don't have a, like a deep budget and they, they can't afford to go and recruit your Bronson Steiners and, and, and what have you, but like you got to get better prospects than what you got. I know losing Ricky Starks didn't help things, but like goddamn. Because they also lost Kingston. Who else did they lose? Yeah, because we, we talk about that mass exit that they ended up having. They lost Kingston. They lost Stark. They lost... Um, hell, they freaking... Didn't they have um, Thunder Rosa? Oh, mm-hmm. sir. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they had uh, Melina. They had... Uh, yeah, they had a they had a, they had a lot of guys, man. That that YouTube run was something else for a while there, and then you know the whole thing with Cornette fell through, and then other stuff fell through, and kind of just crumbling. And they rebounded some, but yeah. If they ever have like a DVD about them, it's gonna be the fall and fall of the NWA. <laughs> they they had well. Here's the thing. Do you remember back in 2010 when Gunner was in TNA and he had a tag team partner named uh, like Judas or something like that, Mikhail or something like that? Yeah. That dude is like 44 and he's in the NWA now as one of their top stars. He's tagging with, or he's uh, teaming up with uh, James Mitchell. So e- e- even their big stars are, aren't even that that big. So I, I would not be surprised to see. Uh, Gunner pop up in the NWA eventually. 
Because I, I really think that that's going to be the uh, the actual s- control your narrative. So we'll see what happens with the NWA. They're uh, they're an interesting beast. So Marcus, let's talk about why we're here tonight, which is the top ten wrestlers to go as for Halloween, regardless on if they're spooky or not. I'm going to go first because they're the photo that we've been using for this week's show, and I'm going to go with either version of La Parca. Whether it's the chairman from WCW or the guy who eventually replaced him after LaParca went from, I think it was like AAA to CMLL or CMLL to AAA, and he redubbed with himself LA Park. Now, the, unfortunately, the other LaParca ended up passing away fairly recently, I think within the last two or three years. Um, not, the one that passed away was not the one from WCW. The one who's still alive is the one from WCW, just so, so we're clear. But if you get a skeleton suit and a lucha mask, you're LaParca. It is the easiest costume to fucking put together. Plus, you get to strut everywhere you go and play Michael Jackson's Thriller for, uh, like, the six people that may know the, the reference to La Parca. So that's, that's my first pick is, is, is L.A. Park and or La Parca, depending on which variant you like. Marcus, hit me with your first pick. Yeah, this is, comes off as a kooky fit for me, and I, I've talked about this before. I, it's wacky, and uh, some people just put a sour taste in their mouth. As it was, I appreciated the level of commitment that went into this character, and I think it fits perfectly with a Halloween thing. Uh, I'm going with Stardust. Hmm. Yeah, going, yeah. Going with uh, going with Stardust. Cody Rose is Stardust. Like I said, you know. There are a few people who put as much commitment into a character as he did during that time, both in and out, specifically out of the ring. And, uh, yeah, just the whole get up and the, and the demeanor and the hissing and, and all that. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that you know, being a, a full Halloween regalia. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. I'm not going with Sting, although Surfer Paint Sting would make a ton of sense. So would Joker. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Uh, but for me, I'm going to go really, like, again, I'm doing deep cuts. Like, that's my list is deep cuts. I'm going with Max Moon, Conan era Max Moon. This is a character from, like, 94, 95, when everyone was doing, like, professional jobs. Like, you had your uh, hockey player, your baseball player, your garbage man, your repo man. Repo man made me the list as well. But the Max Moon character is so just out there. Like it's a blue skin tight suit with like little orange black and and I think like yellow stripes. I, but they're like foam stripes around them. And like the mask is so terrible, but also so cheesy Halloweeny that it just makes sense. And like if, it, you could literally be a spaceman, a superhero, a wrestler. You could call yourself any of those things, and it would work. And I feel like that kind of costume with that kind of a deep variety of possibilities you could tell people you are besides being Max Moon makes it like the quintessential idea for a costume. So, Max Moon. Marcus, what's your second pick? Yeah, we had mentioned this before the show, and, and uh, it was ironic. It immediately went to one of my picks when you mentioned it. I'm going to go with... Uh, I guess it's called it call a deep cut for, for TNA fans. I'm going with Jay Lethal's Black Machismo. Ooh. Yeah, man. Um, obviously, uh, you know, uh, showing, showcasing the talent, of, you know, Jay Lethal's impression game, which we know is high. But, uh, you know, while at the same time being a tribute to the, you know, the late great, uh, you know, Macho Man Randy Savage and uh, that whole thing. So, uh yeah, you put a lot of that. There's a lot of different colorations and whatnot that you could throw in with that. And, you know, I think the J.D. the version was a, a real good uh, uh, tribute to that whole thing. So that that definitely be something cool to rock. So I'm going so, with uh, one that makes sense, but I wouldn't personally want to go if if I was the, this kind of person that could pull it off. But because it's pretty spot on, it's easy to do. It's instantaneous, especially with the hairdo. I'm going with NXT and recent call-up, not recent call-up, but immediate after NXT call-up version of Bailey. 
You have the coats with with, with the, uh, the 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 streamers. You got the the side ponytail coming off the top of your head. That's pretty pretty unique. And, and and there's plenty of Bailey iconography that you can wear. I'm a hugger. There you go. I think all those works. So if you're a a female persuasion, you want to check out a, a costume idea. I highly recommend the Bailey look because a lot of people will probably know it, and it's pretty easy to do. Unlike the Max Moon character, yeah. which would be very fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, and also had its kind of phases of uh, specifically with the makeup. Because when she first started, she looked like the smaller version of the chick from the uh, Cleveland show. <laughs> I'm like, why did you do your makeup? You got to know you look like that big chick uh, with that makeup game. Like, it was, it was just too spot on. Well, yeah, it's... Uh, it's good. She's done a lot with that hero. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's your third pick? For me, I'm going another TNA cut. Uh, somebody that, that was a real favorite of mine. I think this was a real... And although it, it got done for a, a, a marketing reason, I, th- I thought that it was real intriguing and, you know, uh, I mean, it was consistent and, and done well. I thought it was a real intriguing addition to the roster. And definitely something I'd rock. But with, uh, I guess, aspects of the the more uh, recent version of it, I'm going with Suicide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when Kaz and, and, and Daniels was behind that character, he was real mysterious, intriguing. I liked the mannerisms of it. Obviously, it was, you know, to market the TNA game, which was, as we talked about before, was a great foundational game that, uh, could have been and should have been improved upon. Um, but yeah, like I said, when that character was on, he was great. Him uh, repelling from the ceiling and coming down, the music and the movements and the suicide and all that whole thing come alive. Um, but as we say, as we talked about before, only thing that sucked was those damn oven mitt gloves he had. So that was definitely one of the aspects that I switch up. Even the, like the updated gloves. Uh, but keep that character and, and, and come up with a serious vibe. Obviously, he didn't talk. I talking about he just kind of showed up, wrecked the shop, and left. So, and I dug that whole thing. So, yeah. I would. I I just actually bought that game again, so I'm gonna get into it. Uh, a little TNA impact here in a little bit because th- that game was choice. Um, so for me, the other thing that uh, that I look for with a good Halloween costume is, is noticeability, like. Do people recognize you? So this one's going to be off the left field. And I don't like the guy personally. But if you saw him, you'd be like, yup, that's who that is. Marcus, this is for the good hair crowd. I'm going with the honky-tonk man. (laughs) (laughs) All you need is a jumpsuit, some rhinestones, uh, uh, some some, uh, palmade for your hair, and a guitar. That's it. Yeah, Santino will come to Hockey Talk Ma. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Santino. Hockey Talk Ma. Oh, what did they uh, do to my people? <laughs> Although, my people just elected a fascist. So, like, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, I'll never forget, man. Freaking, he was talking and, and he was still with, with, with Beth and John Cena walked up and he said, to John Cena said something and then and, and, uh, Santino went, you know what? You have a big mouth, John Chana. <laughs> oh God, Don Ch- John Chana. Cena's uh, Italian too, so I'm just taking all relax. the <laughs> And then I think he was going talking about going out on a date with somebody. He was like, uh, "Oh, but wait, before I, before I go, I have to, I have to put on some Kellogg now." <laughs> oh, God. This uh, it was there because Santino just probably don't get enough credit for his uh, comedy brilliance with that uh, thing. But uh, well, we're on my number two pick. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. for me, I'm going to go with, uh, yeah, like you said, I think that this goes with uh, re- some wrestling recognizability as much as the Hockey Top 9. Uh, I'm going with Absolute Legend, one of my favorites. Uh, I'm going with, uh, you know, the masked man himself, legendary luchador, Rey Mysterio. Um, when I'm going with his look, uh, I think, you know, more in the recent, uh, later 2000s when he had the, uh, the kind of muscle shirt with the um, rainbow question mark on his shirt. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. With the with this uh, 
types or whatever. I mean, obviously you could do so many different versions. The, the guy, you know, between the 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 anim the should I say superhero elements of his costume, the one I depict, or you know the the one he uh did in, in Lucha, which was good too. So yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, Raven Steel is definitely I think a, a instant grab and go to for a lot of people. Solid. Solid, Solid stuff. <clears throat> for me, my final pick, I'm kind of waffling because, like, on one hand, like, Ultimate Warrior, terrible human being, great costume idea. Hulk Hogan, same situation. Randy Savage, better person, still not great, but, but far less problematic than the last two. For me, though, I look at how much can you get out of your outfit once Halloween is over feel like that's very important and i feel like if you have a dress shirt some black pants a tie-dye shirt you can pull off a three-peat in, in, in one go and i'm going with man love jack aka mankind cactus jack and dude love all rolled together you get the uh the dress up shirt and the mask for mankind you throw on some tie-dye uh, uh like, like a tie-dye undershirt and then you get the t- Cactus Jack leather boots, and, or maybe you do uh, tie-dye pants, and you do the uh, Cactus Jack uh, wanted logo shirt underneath the, uh, the Mankind shirt. You could get a few goes out of that, like just as regular everyday attire. I mean, tie-dye is pretty uh, in vogue at the moment. You could do some leather sh- uh, uh, boots uh, or snake's plaid boots. Uh, you know, the, the dress shirt works for a multitude of reasons. The mask, you know, maybe you're into some BDSM. <laughs> could that could work? So yeah, I'm going with any combination of Mankind, Dude, Love, and Cactus Jack as my final Halloween costume offering. So, Marcus, what's your last pick? Yeah, man, it's a great pick by you. Uh, great uh, thinking on that too. You can uh, you dressing up and dressing down at the same time. Double use out of it. Can't be mad at that. Uh, for me. My, my next pick is over the top. I'm going grandiose. I'm walking in the room to make a statement whether you going, how cool is that or what in the blue hell does that kid have on? I'm going all the way to Boyle Heights uh, and, and, and going for the, the full regalia that came with the one, the hunter himself, King Cuerno. <laughs> yeah. It's that, that full guy. I mean, even when he was dressing down, he was cool. But when he came out in that whole the Hunter vibe and had the head, the big headdress on and that whole deal, just walking in, looked just an absolute statement. And obviously we know, you know, he's evolved uh, into who we know as Santos Escobar now. And then that guy's just phenomenal in general. But this King Cuerno just had a vibe about him. that uh, Even when he was losing, he was still one of the coolest dudes. On the on the show, so yeah, I'm, I'm going full with Gilly and I'm going with the Hunter, uh, the king of the king of the games, if you will, the big game, if you will, King Quino. Solid picks. Oh, okay. So that oh, should do it for this week. Next week we will talk more about Moodin Sting's final match, uh, not Sting's final match, but his involvement with Moodin's final match. Uh, we'll talk the uh, Bound for Glory card. We'll also do our recap of Victory Road for next week. So tune in for that. Um, we, we're not going to do a Halloween list for next week because we have the Bound for Glory, Bound for Glory preview. Bound for Glory. <laughs> There's your Halloween name. Um, so that's going to be for next week. Uh, we're, it's going to be a very impact-heavy show. Uh, we'll also talk about Bobby Fish and Impact. That'll be interesting. I have thoughts, but I need Marcus to, to watch the promo so we can have thoughts together. And, uh, yeah, so that'll be for next week. Be sure to find us on the website at realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-R-P.com. I'm sorry these shows are in two parts recently, but that's the way the Internet crumbles. You can also find Marcus on his, on his Twitter at ParadoxKid, P-A-R-A-D-O-X-K-I-D. That's me. You can find him on his other podcast, The True Penny Show, T R U E P E N N Y S H O W. Check them out on Twitter. That's True Penny Show on Twitter. Uh, on Twitter. On Titter. Yeah. There, there, there's your porn version of Twitter. Titter. Hi, Youngs. Uh-huh. <laughs> you can also find us on Twitter at N E R D C O R P. And you can find me on Twitter at Chad Nurkorp, C H U D N E R D C O R P. And on the Instagram at Chad's Photo. C H U D S P H O T O H U T. That's C H U D S H. P-H-O-T-O-H-U-T. 
Uh, I think that's about it. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. Remember, as always, to watch more wrestling. And Marcus, take us home. Good night.